May the peace and blessings of God Almighty be upon you all. Welcome once again to this special program that's coming to you live from the MTA International Studios here in Kadian, India. The program is the Messiah of the Age, and this is the third day of our live broadcast coming from you here in Kadian. Kadian is the birthplace of the founder of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, who, who claimed to be the long-awaited Messiah, the metaphorical second coming of Jesus, son of Mary, who died after completely um, for completing his successful mission in Nazareth. Um, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ahmad of Qadian, started the foundation of this very community that we are in here in Qadian, India. The programs we've been looking at the uh, the birthplace of the Promised Messiah and of course his mission. And today we have a very important um, subject matter to discuss here in the studio, and that is Khilaf the Ahmadiyya, the spiritual leadership in the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, which is worldwide. With me today, I have some gentlemen here in the studio, but before introducing the ones I have in the studio for you here today, I'll remind you once again that you are also part of this program, this live interactive program. Send in your messages to the WhatsApp number on your screen, and you can also tweet, and we'll pick up those tweets and share the messages that you are sending in, your feedback and your comments, and we want to see them coming in, and I'll keep on repeating and uh, reminding you that you can send them in, and I'll share those messages. We want to hear from you and um, have you, but we'll also have callers that will um, be part of this program as well, so it will be quite interactive. But before going into the topic we have for you, I'll introduce the uh, gentleman that I have here in the studio with me. On my immediate left um, is Ustaz Abdurrahman Cham Sahib, who's a missionary of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community in the Gambia, and he is here with us. Welcome, sir. Right next to him is Habib Muhammad Shafiq Jr., who comes all the way from the United States of America. He's the National Outreach Secretary of the Pan-African Ahmadiyya Muslim Association in the United States of America. Welcome, sir. And the last but not the least, a very common face to most of our viewers is, um, of course, Maulana Azhar Hanif, um, Sahib, who comes from the United States of America. He's a national vice president of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community in the United States of America, and he's also the missionary in charge. Welcome, sir. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Gentlemen, going straight into this very topic that is dear to all of us, and that is the topic of Khilafat. Mm -hmm. Khilafat is something that has been mentioned in different sources. And I'll start with, um, with you, Azhar Anif Saab, before going into that, the background to this very important subject matter. Could you tell us the concept of Khilafat, where it started from? Khilafat is uh, not a concept that is unique to Islam. In fact, the Holy Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. said, every single prophet is followed by a Khalifa. And this is because human beings have a limited span of life. It doesn't matter whether they're a prophet or anyone else. No prophet has been given an eternal life on this earth. In fact, I don't think anyone wants to live here forever. So once that person's lifespan ends, if someone doesn't continue this with the spiritual leadership, successorship of that mission, it will die right then and there. Mm -hmm. And it's strange to see sometimes, when, for instance, in the Bible, it talks about Adam having a very long life of a thousand years. And people have been trying to force it into a physical concept that he lived in that era for 1,000 long years. But actually, it's like you say in the Chinese. Chinese have what they call the Ming Dynasty, M-I-N-G, Ming. And this is a very long dynasty, but Ming died well before that dynasty ended. It meant that whatever was his concepts, his philosophy, his theology, it continued in that long period, and people abided by it. So th the idea is that God is saying to us, we all need spiritual leadership. We need leadership in general, anything. Uh, without a CEO in a company, the company will fall apart. Right. Without a headmaster, the children won't get the proper education they need. Mm -hmm. 
without a, a captain of a team, the team starts to go off track. You know? So every group, without a, a father or a head of a household, again, the kids run wild. Hmm. Allah is thus telling us that khalafit as a concept is needed for the spiritual community, the spiritual family to have unity, leadership, direction hmm. from God all high. And the first one is mentioned is Adam, and has been everyone ever since then, they have been having this concept of khalafit amongst mm -hmm. them. That, that's indeed very important. You touched on the history of it and, and importance of having a head. Uh, and we know, we all know, that is very important. Otherwise, everyone goes scattered around. But it, of course, it comes with the responsibility. And, and Habib Sahib, I don't know if you want to pick up on this. Who then decides who that leader is? It has to come from somewhere. It has, the person has to be appointed or the group have to be appointed. How do you agree on that? How, who takes that responsibility of, of appointing that leader? This is a very important question, and I'll try to give a very succinct uh, three or four important steps to answer this question. The first one is the Khalifa du Masih is the successor of the promised Messiah, who, and he is elected to office by a voting process. Now, this process takes place with members of an electoral college, which was established during the second Khalifat of Hazrat Khalifa to Masi, uh, the second, may Allah be pleased with him. Now during the life of the Khalifa, this electoral college, this electoral college works under the supervision of the Khalifa. Mm -hmm. However, however, upon the demise of the Khalifa, this electoral college then works independently to elect, mm -hmm. as it were, the next Khalifa. Mm -hmm. Now during the election conclave of the Khalifa, Imam Diba Saab, Names are properly moved and seconded by members of this selected electoral college, and then they vote on the proposed names uh, by a show of raising their hands. Now, as Ahmadi Muslims, we firmly believe that it is Allah who selects this Khalifa as he did in the time of the Khalifa Rashidun. Whenever the election of the Khalifa occurs, the hearts and minds of the electors are all turned towards this same person. And this is an extraordinary thing that a lot of our viewers may not under, uh, understand. However, in concluding, this spiritual synergy, it concludes very intricately in an election of a new Khalifa of the time. Now, this last point, is extraordinarily important that this divinely appointed process of spiritual succession, it further increases the Ahmadiyya Jamaat's collective faith, it refreshes us and puts into sharp focus Allah Ta'ala's promise to us regarding leadership, unity, peace, security, that only the Khalifa is duly appointed um, vice-garant, as it were, mm -hmm. uh, for the Ahmadiyya Muslim community worldwide. Now, the last point, mm -hmm. which is extraordinarily important. <coughs> when a Khalifa has been elected, mm -hmm. every man, mm -hmm. woman, mm -hmm. boy, mm -hmm. girl of the community mm -hmm. must render complete and utter obedience mm -hmm. and acceptance. I, I, I think that's very important there. You know, what you, what you mentioned, that God Almighty is the one, according to our belief, yes. is the one that appoints. Yes. So, so the back, uh, Chamsa, if you want to touch on that, how does God Almighty, if, if, if people are the ones making that election, and God Almighty is the one that appoints this person, could you clarify that? Where, where do we get that source from? Um, very good. Um, you know, um, Khilafat um, is a subject oh, that's mentioned mm -hmm. in various parts of the Holy Quran. Okay. But when you come to the election itself, for example, we Personally, I've met some people mm -hmm. who were part of that electoral college mm -hmm. or electoral body, mm -hmm. and they will testify to you that when a person's name is mentioned, mm -hmm. who is to become a khalifa of a time, mm -hmm. you know, some people testify that their hands just went up. Mm -hmm. They didn't even know how. Right. So this shows that there's a power mm -hmm. that's behind everybody in that, you know, electoral college. Right. So, so what about the mention of, of Khilafat in the Holy Quran? Is there, is there any mention of it? Yeah. The um, concept of Khilafat? Yeah, in, in, in various parts of the Holy Quran, um, the subject of Khilafat is mentioned. Mm -hmm. For example, Allah Almighty, you know, told Hazrat Adam um, that he's going to 
appoint him as a Khalifa. Right. Then as a Daud also was called the Khalifa of God Almighty. Mm -hmm. And what the main, um, um, the main verse whereby Khilafat is mentioned, right. that we base the Khilafat Ahmadiyyad on is on in Surah, in chapter 24, the Surah Nur, verse 56. Right. When Allah promised to the believers who do good deeds, who believe and do good deeds, that he will establish for them or he'll make them Khilafat as he made Khilafat before. So God Almighty is saying himself, himself. That he will make the Khalifa. Yeah, it's, it's, right. this, is a, this is a promise from Allah mm. Almighty. Okay. And interestingly, after the demise of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, <laughs> you know, <coughs> when Muslims were afraid, mm. when Muslims became fearful mm -hmm. and thought that, okay, our leader is gone. Like Imam Sab rightly said, without no leader, there is no direction. Mm -hmm. So the Muslims were afraid. What is going to happen to us now? Right. And the, the disbelievers, that's the enemies, the opponent of um, Islam, were rejoicing, they were happy mm -hmm. that now the Holy Prophet is gone, Islam this is the end. Mm -hmm. And Allah Almighty appointed, as He promised in the Holy Quran, He appointed Hazrat Abu Bakr as the Khalifa of the Muslims. And through that Khilafat, Islam expanded, Islam grew, you know, and reached, you know, countries or places whereby without Khilafat, this will never be possible. Mm -hmm. And interestingly also, um, after the demise of the promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wa salam, right. Allah again fulfilled his promise right. to the believers, that is the members of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat. Right. When the promises are passed away, you know, members of the Jamaat were confused, they were afraid, they were scared, they, had, they were fearful that Muslim world is gone now. Exactly the same thing Exactly the same thing, the yeah. So the alhamdulillah, Prophet. with the election of Hazrat Mulvi Hakim Nurzi and Razi Allah Anhu, mm -hmm. that you know, Khilafat, as promised by God Almighty in the Holy Quran, was, it was you know, fulfilled and established. Just to touch on this, Azad Anif Sahib, uh, I'd love to come back to you here. The, an interesting comment that the enemies of Ahmadiyyad made at that point when God Almighty, now he mentioned about um, the, the election that happens, but even before the electoral body, he said it came after the, um, during the time of the second Khalifa, he introduced the electoral body, but before that, the enemies made a comment that the new leader of the Ahmadi Muslims after the demise of the promised Messiah is someone who only knows the Holy Quran. Yes. So of course they're doomed to fail. Could you throw some light on that? Yes. See, the, the idea is that from Messiah alayhi salam, the founder of Jamaat, he said that the, the enemies of God and Islam have two joys. The one joy, uh, the, the two hopes. The one hope is that uh, during the time of the prophet, he'll fail. Mm -hmm. That was... <coughs> And that was completely futile as a hope because throughout their life, all their expectations were the ones that were failing. Right. And Jamaat continued to, to advance and progress and move forward. Right. Now their second hope was, as it was mentioned, that upon his demise, either the community would be so disrupted, no one would come forward and lead them, or the leader would be weak. Mm -hmm. So this was a, a way of trying to point out that the new leader hasn't the same quality of leadership as the founder. So he's also going to be a failure yes. and because all he knows is the Holy Quran. But Allah Almighty has said the Quran is everything for a Muslim. For a Muslim, the Holy Prophet Muhammad says, Inama ana bashru mislakum. I am only a man like you. So why, what distinguishes me over anyone else? You ha ilayya, that God has revealed to me this holy word. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was who the Holy Prophet Muhammad yes. was. His own wife said, and asked the question, who's Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. She said, Khulquhul Quran. Mm -hmm. To see him is as if you're seeing the Holy Quran personified. So to, to someone to say, any of us, oh, all you know is Quran, I'll be, alhamdulillah, thank you. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's that's a, a mark that I'm truly following Prophet Muhammad yeah. and I'm his representative now, yes. because this should be one of the qualities, <laughs> as he's mentioned, prayer and righteousness, and what is more righteous than one who has his heart and soul in Quran. This was the first Khalifa, and we are so blessed because of that. And indeed, we saw how God Almighty um, supported him, and, and the appointment, the success of that person tells us that, of course, the appointment of God Almighty was with him. Mm -hmm. As we told you, um, our dear viewers, um, you can send in your tweets at MTA Africa. That's the Twitter handle. Please see, keep them coming in, and of course, your messages as well. And I'll read just um, a couple of messages that we've received so far. There's many of them. <laughs> Um, we've received a message um, from Fosen, who's from Jamaica. He says, we are grateful to Allah for being part of this historic live series from Qadian. As we bring down the curtains on this series, we pray that the world recognizes it and accepts the truth of Imam Mahdi and Allah saves the world from a catastrophic end. I mean, we have another one from Haj, Haji Nasir from Kenya. I take this opportunity to appreciate the program 
Um, it's such an amazing program that sleeping moods here in Kenya has gone despite it's time to sleep. Wow, wow, that's indeed beautiful. Um, we have another message. Um, it says, Assalamu alaikum to all members of Jamaat Ahmadiyya worldwide with this live program, The Messiah of the Age from Qadian. And being watched worldwide, Ahmadi is now looking towards Qadian via MTA. Another grand prophecy is fulfilled and uh, that a lot of people will come to Qadian to meet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and many more of those messages. So please keep your messages coming in and tweeting, of course, to MTA Africa, that um, Muslim TV Africa, that's our MTA handle, and we'll keep sharing those messages with you. Just after this, we will show you now um, a small piece that we have put together for our viewers to enjoy, and it's the expansion of the Jamaat. This is um, a piece that we've put together and we hope you enjoy watching it. But immediately after that, we'll come back into the studio and we'll continue this um, very vibrant discussion about Khilafat Ahmadiyya that is happening right here. <laughs> The Ahmadiyya community was only named so in 1900. However, it was in 1889, a time when the community was known to only a handful of people, and the village of Kadian itself would not be found on any map. So how did this humble community, which started from an unknown town, expand to the corners of the world, and how did it lay the foundations of this success. After the demise of the promised Messiah, who left behind a treasure of knowledge in the form of Ruhani Kazain, a compilation of his books in which he portrayed Islam in its true form. And through his commentaries of the Holy Quran, Khilafat and the divine decree was manifested, and thus the future of the Jamaat was established, with its roots firmly in the ground and its branches elevated in the sky. In the time of the second caliph, Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmad radiallahu anhu. The community was forced to migrate from Qadian under divine decree. The stigma of migration. Upon this very revelation, Hazrat Muslim Maud radiallahu anhu under divine instruction by Allah Almighty decided to move the headquarters to a place called Chakdagian. When the opponents found out about this plan, they all vowed to collectively destroy the Jamaat and not even leave a brick standing. They scorned and mocked at the Caliph of Allah because his chosen land was barren, without water, and incapable of supporting life. However, today we can see that this place, once known as Chakdagian, is now leading fruits, rivers, and civilizations. Today, this land is now known as Rabwa. Those opponents who ridicule the Jamaat are nowhere to be seen today, and those who follow the Messiah are now prevalent all across the world. Under the divine scheme of Tahrik Jadid, Muslim Ma'ud sent missionaries bearing the message of the Messiah to countries worldwide. Through their commitment and sacrifices, the Jamaat prospered and spread over the entire world. With the expansion of the Jamaat came about the expansion of mocks. schools and hospitals all over the world available to people from all walks of life today 
It is this very caliphate which has driven the community forward. And now it has spread its branches into 210 nations, hosting 16,000 mosques, 56 hospitals and clinics, 700 schools, and it has now translated the Quran into 75 languages. All these achievements and milestones would not be achievable without the divine hand of Khilafat, which has been manifested by Allah Almighty Himself in this age. Ja al masi u ja al masi. Welcome back, our dear viewers. Um, I hope you have enjoyed that um, small piece that we have put together for you. And um, as I said, I'll remind you again now, keep um, sending the message in through the WhatsApp number on your screen and through Twitter as well. We're receiving more messages that I want to share with you, our viewers. Um, one of our um, viewers says, my name is Arosha Mariam from Sierra Leone and I am watching this program with my family. May Allah bless the Ahmadiyya Jamaat worldwide. Thank you, Sister Mariam. Another message from Aliu Abdul Rashid um, from Nigeria. I would like to share my joy with fellow Ahmadi members using this opportunity to pray for our Khalifa. May Allah be his helper. Amin. Mm -hmm. As well as congratulating Ghanaian members on their Jalsa Salana. So, mm -hmm. Um, Jamaat Ahmadiyya Ghana is having the annual convention. Congratulations to them. And he's sending his greetings as well to members of the panel and all members of the MTA crew for the job well done. Thank you very much. Um, Sister Aziza Tahira from Uganda says, Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah. Thank you for the wonderful program. Long live Jamaat Ahmadiyya. Thank you very much, Sister Aziza. A tweet from Hafiz Kisawe, um, he says, Jazakallah for the wonderful program. May Allah bless you. May Allah bless you too, Hafiz Sab. Um, we are watching from the Gambia. This is a very beautiful program and we are learning new things from it. May Allah bless you all. Thank you for that message. Um, we have another one. We have watched all these, um, all three episodes of this series and have enjoyed and learned a lot. The videos about Qadiyan are very inspiring. And um, the viewer says he prays that we will all get the opportunity to visit this holy place. I mean, thanks for bringing the beauty of Qadian, the promised Messiah, and Khilafat in our living <coughs> rooms. So that's Naila Abbasi from Aldershot in UK talking about Khilafat. And that brings us right back into the conversation. And I'm Chamsa, I'll start with you. So when God Almighty talks about um, Khilafat in the Holy Quran, as you've mentioned just before we went for that break, um, then there must be some qualities of that Khilafah that will tell us what the true Khilafah is, some attributes. Could you throw some light on those, please? Um, thank you very much. Um, when we look at the, in the Holy, Holy Quran in chapter 24, verse 56, Allah you know, clearly mentioned the attributes of what true Khilafah is all about. Mm -hmm. And uh, first of all, Allah said, like we mentioned before, that He will establish Khilafah for people who believe and do good deeds. Mm -hmm. But um, the, 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 the qualities or attributes of these, um, of true Khilafat is that, you know, after establishing the religion for the uh, believers, right. that is true Khilafat, Allah will in turn, you know, change their fear into peace and security. Right. And also they will worship only Allah. So, you know, how do we analyze this? For example, after a prophet passed away, for example, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Mustafa mm -hmm. mm -hmm. passed away, or when the Promised Messiah wasalam, passed away, the enemies, the disbelievers, the opponents, they rejoiced that, okay, this is the end of Islam during the time of the Holy Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. And Allah said, no, I will appoint, you know, a Khalifa who will, you know, in that way he established for them their religion, mm -hmm. that is Islam. And when you come to the time of the promise of Allah also, when he passed away, the enemies of Muslims said that, okay, this is the end of Islam. It's not about the end of Ahmadiyyad. Mm -hmm. If it goes off, you know, by that time in those days, you understand the Christians, the Aryans, many people were fighting Islam. Chinese. And the promise of Allah was the one in defense. 
And when he passed away, they rejoiced and said, no, now this is the end of it. Mm -hmm. But Allah Almighty said, no, I will establish this religion, that is Islam, through Khilafat. That's why up to today we see that Islam, the true message of Islam, is being spread to different parts of the world. And Allah said, the fear of the believers, is that Khalifa that is appointed, is he turning the fear of the believers into peace and security? If that is done, then we know that that is true. And for example, today is the Khilafah that we are witnessing. Mm. Hazur, our beloved Khalifa, is always admonishing us to worship God. You know, whenever we are, even personally, not just early me or you, any Ahmadi who has a problem, he goes to Hazur. Hazur will turn that fear of that person mm -hmm. into peace and security. Right. Not just early Ahmadis, even, even non Ahmadis would, you know, they will testify to this. Mm -hmm that we hear a lot of things about Islam. We are afraid of Islam. But the moment we hear the Khalifa speak, it's just like our perspective, our thought, what we think of Islam, all changes to a new thing, that, that the fear is gone. Mm -hmm. So the Khalifa is actually fulfilling that. Mm -hmm. And then also Allah, I, and Allah said that he, they will worship only me. Mm -hmm. And Hazur, whenever he speaks, whether the present Khalifa, all the Khulafa mm -hmm. of Jamaat, all the Khulafa Rashidin, they always admonish believers <coughs> to worship the only one God. Right. Every Friday, someone almost when Hazul stood in front of us, mm -hmm. he is telling us that we should worship God and we should not associate any partner with God. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, the, ta the last point that I want to say here is the Holy Prophet Muhammad Mustafa mm -hmm. sallam, he said that the true Khilafat that will come mm -hmm. after him will be on the, precept, on the precept of prophethood. Right. So today, the promise Mr. Ali Salat was salam, so, you know, today I was working in, I mean, where the second manifestation happened. I was reading, and Muslim alayhi salatu wasalam said that the second manifestation cannot come unless he's gone. Right. And he said, this will be with you for the rest, for the, for the, for the rest of the ages. Mm -hmm. And how can he confidently, mm -hmm. you know, just say this without any divine intervention or divine revelation from, from God? Almighty. Alhamdulillah, that, um, that, that is established on the precept of you know, or, you know, prophethood, that Khilafat Ahmadiyya. That's, I mean, the, the verse that you, the verse that you quoted, chapter 24, verse 56, which clearly mentioned these attributes of a, of a true Khalifa. Imam, Sahab, Imam Azhar and Sahib, I'll come to you here. 1908 was when the promised Messiah, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Qadian, passed away. From 1908 up to 2017. The Holy Quran tells us clearly, these are the attributes of a true Khalifa. How has that been manifested from 1908 to today? In, in well, I, I, appreciating the comments of uh, Ustaz Cham, we see that uh, from 1908 up to now, mm -hmm. 2017, there's one Muslim group in the world that has always had the advantage of spiritual focus. And this is what the Prophet brings to us. As we mentioned in yesterday's program, well, what, is, what is the whole purpose of this coming of the Messiah? The Messiah was to come to revive faith that was going to die. Mm -hmm. yes. And at the demise of the prophet, again, there's a hope of some that uh, there'll be the end of that uh, ministry and mm -hmm. whatever he achieves is going to, to end. Mm -hmm. In this case, our faith would have also declined. Mm -hmm. But by Allah's grace, this faith is spreading. Mm -hmm. In this program today, just the, the, the message you're getting from around the world, mm -hmm. all over the African cont continent in the world, shows that faith is not only surviving, it's thriving, right. it's spreading, it's, inf it's influencing and affecting more and more hearts. The, one of the beautiful verses of the Quran that talks about Khilafat is in Surah Ali Imran, and, it's, and it commands us, in fact, wa atasimu bi hablillahi jamia. Hold fast to the rope of God, jamia, all together. Wa farku, and do not let anything divide you. Mm -hmm. This is the beauty of Jamaat Ahmadiyya. There is no division from the spiritual head to the last person. All are uniform, all are united behind the voice of the Khalifa. If he were to say t today to us, anyone, any in the world, and he addresses us every single Friday from London, whatever command he gives us, it goes to the entire body and no one is questioning or wondering. It's like when the Holy Prophet Muhammad said, said to break the, the vessels of wine, they began breaking right then and then. They didn't question the order, they began following the order. Mm -hmm. So the beauty of that is it creates unity and uniformity yes. 
and gives us spiritual mm -hmm. focus, not political, not uh, economic, not national, not racial, not cultural, not lingual. None of those things now matter. It's only spiritual quality. And that unites us because without that, see, we will be talking again about Africa and Asia and American amities or talking about, you know, the, the rich and the poor and, and this and that. You know, all those issues will come in. Right. By Allah's grace, the manifestation of Khilafat is, it brings us back to our spiritual base. It focuses every aspect of our organization and our efforts on the spiritual goal of life, which is to get closer to our Creator. Mm -hmm. And in so doing, closer to one another. Yes. And that we found, alhamdulillah. Yes. Where else do you find in the Muslim world such a harmony amongst the Muslims? You, you, you go to the mosque sometimes and you, you, you pain to see that in the mosque it's the, again lingual and cultural and, and, and regional things going on where it should be universal. Yes. So this was the miracle of the Holy Prophet Muhammad yes. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes. And we are again so fortunate. We don't recognize it sometimes. <laughs> yeah. What we have been gif gifted yes. in terms of khilafat right. to yes. make us love not just God but love each other and work together. And, and humanity, the last thing I would say, the idea of service of humanity under the Khilafat. All the petrol dollars and all of the, the gold and, and the diamonds that these Muslims yes. are collecting, yes. what have they done in the world with it? Mm -hmm. Forget the rest of the world, the Muslim world. Yeah. Mm. They could solve the issues in so many poor suffering nations. Right. Mm -hmm. The refugee crisis of Syrians, you know, the mm -hmm. S -S Somalia, Sudan Sudanese issues. Mm -hmm. Right there in Africa, you know, so much wealth we have, right. but without the lack of Khilafat. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what Hazrat Uthman, the third Caliph of Islam, said when they came to assassinate him. They said, if you succeed today, I warn you, after this you will never be united, you will never stand together in prayer, and you will never have the power to face your common enemy. Is that not the history of Islam since that time? But is that the history of Jamaat Ahmadiyyad? All of our enemies have failed because we are united. All of us are united in prayer because we are behind one Imam. And all of us have that unity and love of God because of this, the, the teachings of, of, of Jamal, so alhamdulillah. Uh, that's very clearly mentioned. And I, uh, Habib Saab, coming to you, yes. I mean, this Jamal, it's a movement, the Ahmadiyya movement in Islam. Yes. We are not here to, you know, get stagnant at one point and look no, at each other. Not at all. It's a progress. Absolutely. But this progress, the key there is our leadership. Yes. What, what role has it played in terms of the expansion of the Jamaat on the Khilafat? Extraordinary question. Thank you very much. You know, the promised Messiah came and Allah spoke to him. And one of the things that Allah spoke to him and said, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, I am with you, I love you, and I will cause thy message to reach the corners of the earth. Now upon the, the demise of the promised Messiah, Allah, Salaam, the detractors and enemies of the Jamaat thought that it was finished. Mm -hmm. Then Allah initiated, initialized the second manifestation and there was the election of Hazrat Nuruddin, mm -hmm. our first Khalifa. Mm -hmm. While he was an older, saintly, marvelous individual, he stabilized the Jamaat to let them know that the promise of Allah was true. God spoke to this Messiah mm -hmm. and his message will reach the corners of the earth. Mm -hmm. Then came the demise of the first Khalifa and the second Khalifa came who was not only just the second Khalifa in Ahmadiyya but also the promised son and he would have these extraordinary attributes, <coughs> 51 or so in this prophecy. One of those extraordinary attributes of his was his ability to be able to organize, organize in his leadership. So under his leadership and divine inspiration from Allah Ta'ala, he began to put into motion a set of extraordinary organizational and departmental aspects that begin to expand right. Jamaat Ahmadiyya. Mm -hmm. Now up, upon his, as, as this Jamaat expanded, upon his demise was our continued promise, the third Khalifa came. The third Khalifa came and in doing his administration, he took that expansion, consolidated it, and said to this Jamaat, you are a Jamaat of love for all, mm -hmm. hatred for none. And he did an important thing. He went and he knocked on the door of the continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Upon the demise of the third Khalifa, now comes the fourth Khalifa. Mm -hmm. The fourth Khalifa 
with his brilliance and intelligence prior to becoming the Khalifa, he began to continue this expansion and with one extraordinary thing that he collected from the promised Messiah's prophecies, prophecy, I shall cause thy message, and that is the initiation of MTA, in which we are, are utilizing here today. Also, this fourth Khalifa said to the world, look here, this is a message of peace. And Islam, there's no such thing as murder in the name of Allah. And also under his Khalifat, we saw how Allah showed that he was with this Khalifa and began to vow and vanquish certain specific enemies by name. Then came the fifth Khalifa. And the extraordinary thing of the fifth Khalifa that I'm just so uh, humbled and awed by is this fifth Khalifa has taken all of this progress and leadership and provided sound leadership at a time when saber rattling and swords and, and uh, uh, atomic uh, 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 talk is just bantered around like nothing. And so, for an example, when Hazrat Khalifa Tumasi comments, when he came to the United States, he came to Washington, D.C. He did not come for coffee and Danish. He came for one reason and one reason only, that he was Allah's Khalifa and he came to speak truth to power. And for him, this power seat was in Washington, D.C. He didn't come to collect a plaque or this or that. And he lovingly, but very firmly and concisely, he spoke truth to power and said to those leaders who would dare listen, look, if you do not turn and begin to show, if you do not turn from this path, right. you're headed towards destruction. Which is, which is a very clear warning. That Absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> just to pick up from there, we have a, um, a caller on the line, um, Dr. Sa Iftikhar Ayyaz Sahib, who um, is very, very familiar with the subject matter that he just touched on. And that is the, um, the, the, the admonitions of the Hazrat Khalifa al to the leaders of the world. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Sir Dr. Iftir Khara Yasab, are you with us? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much. Allah bless you. Jazakallah. And, and in a timely manner, um, to go straight into the question that I have for you tonight, what has been the message of His Holiness, the Supreme Head of the Worldwide Ahmadiyya Muslim Community, to different leaders of the world? Could you throw some light on that? <coughs> oh, well, definitely. As your um, audience, your listeners will know, the uh, His Holiness Mirza Masrur Ahmed is the fifth successor of the reformer of this age, the promised Messiah, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, peace be upon him. And he has taken on him to defend Islam against all the false allegations made about Islam, that Islam is a violent religion and it has created terrorists in the world. Mm -hmm. So he has taken on him to travel around the world and he has been to all the regions of the world to take this message of peace of Islam. Mm -hmm. The Abiria community is the community which has taken on to present Islam in practice, the true pristine, pure teachings of Islam throughout the world in practice. And it is showing to the world that Islam is truly a religion of peace. And His Holiness has taken this message to the top leaders of the world. He has been to so many countries in Africa. He has met met the presidents of so many countries in Africa, he has addressed the parliament, and he has also traveled far and uh, wide to the various regions of the world. He has addressed the congressmen and the senators in the, uh, in the American Washington uh, parliament. He has been to the European Union Parliament to address the parliamentarians of the whole of Europe. He has been to Australia, he has been to New Zealand, he has been to Fiji, he has been to Japan, 
you name the country, anywhere in the world, any major country. And his message has been that first and foremost, it is very important for humanity that they should recognize their creator. They should link up with their creator. This is very important because peace comes from the creator. It is not a business of the politicians. It is not a business of uh, the uh, people you know, who claim that they can bring peace to the world. So His Holiness has first and foremost said that link up, link up with the, the uh, Creator, whatever your faith, whatever your religion, and believe and understand that Islam does not believe in violence at all. Islam brought a prophet, the founder of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, who was a mercy from humanity, who was a mercy for humanity. And all Muslims Dr. have to be Dr. a Sir? mercy for all humanity. Dr. Sir, uh, just a follow-up question, just a follow-up question on this, um, Dr. Saab. Um, we know that um, His Holiness has indeed um, traveled to many countries and of course addressed them. That's his role and responsibility, which he is doing, absolutely. How have these world leaders taken this message in terms of have they taken any heed? Have they been listening to him? Have they been applying it in any way to your knowledge? Well, actually you see that there is a gradual change. There is more awareness of Islam being a peaceful religion. And people are now rejecting the false allegation that Islam brought violence to the world and Islam brought fundamentalism and extremism and terrorism to the world. People are now understanding and they are very much relying on the message of His Holiness, the successor, the Khalifa of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. His message, they are understanding it. And they are also recognizing that link with the Creator is very important and also following the code of conduct that the Creator has provided for humanity mm -hmm. to live in peace is also very important. Absolutely. And one of those fundamentals um, uh, they are realizing... Dr. Saab, in, absolutely. In, um, very, very important um, messages that the Holy Holiness has been given to leaders of the world. Yes. And as you've said, the wise ones are listening. Uh, we also have the um, national president of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, the Gambia, um, Malana Baba F. Trawale Sahib, um, who is also with us. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, Amir Saab, are you with us? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. How are you, Amir Saab, and how, is, how are you in the Gambia? Alhamdulillah, everything is fine. Alhamdulillah, uh, witnessing this bed, Jalsa Salana. MashaAllah. I um, just have a couple of questions for you. Uh, we are talking about um, Khilafat um, of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. Um, in terms of your country, the Gambia, how has this true Khilafat helped to shape and change the lives of um, different people in your country? What contributions has it brought um, for a country like the Gambia in Africa? We are very much thankful to Allah Almighty that uh, we have witnessed and watch this successful Qadian Jalsa Salana 2017. What made this Jalsa Salana more blessed and successful is the concluding address of His Holiness Asar Kalfat Masi the fifth. May Allah Almighty strengthen and be his helper, which inspired, enlightened, and captivated the heart. The address was on the lofty status of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, depicting the high status of our master, and the timing was really suitable and appropriate. More than 40, 50 years ago in the Gambia, people, some people said we don't mention the name of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we have our own Holy Quran. By the grace of Allah Almighty, the blessed institution of Khilafat Ahmadiyya has really shaped the lives of the Gambians spiritually, morally, and physically. It was in late 1950s and 1960s, missionaries came to this country through Tariq Jadid. Our missionaries throughout the country started preaching the true teachings of Islam. And this was one of the reasons the young people and few elders fought 
foot and nail for Ahmadiyya to come to the Gambia. And uh, before coming, you have different traditions, customs, and other practices. Through the efforts of our missionaries, Alhamdulillah, things have been improving spiritually and all aspects. For example, Friday sermons. 40 years, 50 years ago, they are not translated, they are not interpreted. It's a taboo. The Jamaat introduced that. Put your hands on your chest during prayers. If they see you doing that, they will say you are Ahmad. They will drive you from the mosque. That has changed. Every Imam today is delivering his sermon in local language, which people will understand. Indeed, that has when helped you, go around, that has helped you educate people. That. That has indeed helped to educate people who are not even Ahmadis and are benefiting from the blessings of the, of the Khalifa sending, of course, his representatives in terms of missionaries. And of course, in teachers and um, uh, medical health pr practitioners in, in countries like the Gambia and other um, African countries too. In terms of the, the, the leadership, how has um, you know, Khilafat, that is worldwide of course, and uh, worldly leadership in your country for example, how do you see the difference between these two? Even though there's leadership in that country, but of course the wings of Khilafat has, has been extended to your country. Could you throw some, some light on that? As you rightly said, um, uh, people benefited through our schools, Nusra High School built in 1971, had facilities, but it does not end there. The institution of Khilafat cannot be compared to any other worldly uh, leadership mm -hmm. because the institution is divinely established here where the institution has no personal interest hidden interest like the worldly leaders mm -hmm. the institution is a united body mm -hmm. helping every member of the jamaat mm -hmm. the community and humanity at large mm -hmm. taking the interest of everybody as his own, the pain mm -hmm. of any, everybody uh, in the Jamaat or outside as his own. Indeed, uh, Amir Sahib, well, um, thank you very much for um, enlightening us about the uh, contributions of um, Islam Ahmadiyyad through the leadership of Khilafat in your country and many other um, countries around the world indeed. And as I've promised you, our viewers, please keep sending in your messages and your tweets and I'll read out some that I have here. Um, one of our viewers says, a um, message from uh, Mutasim Billah, and he's from Germany, who says, um, we have been enjoying the excellent thought-provoking discussion from esteemed panel. Um, so panelists, they are thanking you for, the, for that. And please convey our salam and good wishes to all, especially the panel members have just done that. Mm -hmm. Greetings and heartfelt appreciation for the informative show. This is a message from Rayan Alom um, from Cape Town in South Africa. Mm -hmm. A corner of the earth, indeed, and a fulfillment of a prophecy of the promised Messiah. And a message from um, Suleiman from Uganda. He would like to um, thank all of us for this um, very um, educative program. And we truly appreciate that. Thank you very much, Lukman. Now, the Khalifa, of course, is playing this big role in, in terms of um, advising the world leaders, admonishing them and calling them back to their creator. But the Khalifa also has a role in terms of leading the members of the Ahmadiyya Muslim yes. community. We have another caller on the line, that's Sister Ali Latif from the United States of America. Mr. Ali, are you with us? Uh, yes, I am. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa We talked about this um, great role that the Khalifa has, Azar Mirza Masroor Ahmed, who is the supreme head of the worldwide Ahmadiyya Muslim community, in terms of um, addressing the leaders of the world and individuals. Could you tell us more about um, his relationship with Ahmadi Muslims around the world? How does he um, re relate to them? Could you throw some light on that, please? Absolutely. Um, I'm here in Brooklyn, New York, and across the ocean from where Hazur resides. However, the beauty of Ahmadiyya is that we all have an opportunity to have a personal relationship with our Khalifa. This capacity Allah has given him to know and to remember, to understand, to give individual attention and love to each Ahmadi who comes to meet him, to the Ahmadis who write him, is something that is a divine gift. And I make an effort to try to come to UK Jalsa, but even without being able to come, 
there's so many opportunities to foster relationships right from your home. So for me personally, the diaries that his press secretary, Abu Khan, writes and releases, they're published online. They're such beautiful insights to get to know more about Hazur, to get to learn more about our Jamaat, to understand his perspective on different issues, beautiful speeches he's given, prayers he recommends. These are all ways that you can make Hazur a, a day-to-day -day part of your life. And on, a personal, and on a personal level, in terms of our responsibilities as Ahmadi Muslims, how do we, um, from your personal um, perspective, of course, how do you keep that relationship with your Khalifa, even though you're living across the pond in the United States of America, and he lives in London? How do you keep that relationship alive? Well, I make an effort each year to try to travel there and be in his company. But additionally, I write to him often. And I write in response to these diaries that I'm talking about. I write long responses. And the beauty is when you respond to these diaries, Abu Khan, his secretary, shares feedback that he receives from around the world. So it's gotten to a point where now, just hearing my responses, hearing something that I've said, Hazor will ask, how is he doing? How is she feeling? He'll check and see. I haven't heard from her in a while. I haven't read a response from her. And he'll have, you know, to be concerned and interested to know how I'm doing way over here in America. So that kind of relationship is open to anyone. You simply log onto your computer, read a diary, and write a response that emails right there to reach your press secretary. Alhamdulillah, and absolutely. That, that is a relationship that um, the Khalifa has with, with, with all, almost all Ahmadis around the world who make that effort to reach out to the, uh, to the Khalifa of the time. And for this as well, we will show you a short piece about how Khilafat um, is extending um, all around the world. Please enjoy that and then come back and, and have um, the, this with us in the studio. Even I didn't know when I was elected, then my name even will be proposed. The election is the same as the Pope is elected. When Caliphate exists on the precepts of justice, consideration for the rights of others and an overall deep will for peace, as defined by the Quran and the Holy Prophet himself, then Caliphate has the ability to serve as a grand force for good in the world. He is known by world leaders for his humanitarian efforts and his mission for world peace, anchored by his famous slogan of love for all, hatred for none. He has traveled extensively to spread the message of peace and to remind everyone to respect the rights of other human beings. During his tours, His Holiness has met with world leaders from the Far East to Europe, from North America to Africa, discussing the economic, social, and political problems in the world today. and how to create peace and justice in the world. He has also met religious and community leaders in order to share common values and core ideals universal to all religions and cultures. With a view to improving the moral state of mankind and creating an atmosphere of love and affection, from young to old, he compassionately listens to the ordinary man, regardless of race, color, or religion. He has personally initiated social projects and schemes to alleviate poverty and human suffering. His concern is not just about the well-being and moral state of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, but of great human suffering of mankind at large. Today, this man, Mirza Masrur Ahmad, worldwide head of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, is the Caliph of Ahmadiyya the true Islam, and his followers number in the tens of millions spread over 200 countries in the world, making him the leader of the largest single Muslim group in the world, who follow one Imam. The Caliphs of Ahmadiyya 
have toured the world to meet their beloved members and their tours have attracted many more seekers of truth around the world just as radiant light attracts the creations of Allah Almighty. With the introduction of MTA in the era of the fourth caliph, Khazrat Mirza Tahrir Ahmad, Rahimullah, the Jamaat found new means to spread the message of Islam to the corners of the world. Today, there is MTA 1, MTA Europe, MTA Arabia, and MTA Africa, which has proved to be a vital force for the expansion of the Jamaat. The promised Messiah alayhi salam states, O mankind, hearken, this is the prophecy of God, who made the heavens and the earth. He will spread this movement in all countries and will give it supremacy over all through reason and argument. I came only to sow the seed. That seed has now sown by my hand. It will now grow and blossom for, and none there impede is growth. Isma u sauta sama ja al masi u ja al masi. Welcome back, our dear viewers. We are continuing with the topic of Khilafat in Ahmadiyyat and the supreme head of the worldwide Ahmadiyya Muslim community presently, and that is Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmad and um, some of the things that he is doing to contribute to um, peace in the world. Habib <coughs> Sabal, come to you again as we were talking about some of the travels of His Holiness, Azad Mirza Masroor Ahmed. Could you highlight some of the subjects that he's been addressing in, um, in his different tours and, and how he's been waking us up with regards to the, the global condition of the world right now? This is a, a very significant point you raise, Imam Saab. I will try to address this in just two really quick points. One is external and the other is internal. On the external side, His Holiness Hazrat Khalifatu Masih the fifth, may Allah give him long life, has wrote very, very powerful epistles, letters to world leaders. Specifically, mm -hmm. he has visited world capitals and parliaments to try to get them to look at the, the broad global issue of conflict and war and to try to uh, incite them to come together towards international uh, interfaith harmony. The, 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 the second point is internal. Our, our, this, our beloved Imam is constantly reminding us for self-reformation, self-reflection, and for us in this time to walk the walk of the Messiah and Mahdi and truly be worthy of being companions mm -hmm. of this, this Imam of this okay. age. So, um, Azul Anissa, the condition of the world today is very critical and the role of the Khalifa. If we are going to have any hope mm -hmm. at this time, ask yourself this one simple question. Mm -hmm. Where do you see that hope? Mm -hmm. Is it the institutions that have been formed by man, mm -hmm. the United Nations, League of Nations, all these organizations around the world, whether it's in Africa or any other continent, mm -hmm. none of them seem to have the solution and answers because it is only God Almighty who's established the principles mm -hmm. where man can live in peace and harmony, and mm -hmm. this is Khalafat. It is so critical now. He's like the Noah of the age calling you to get on board this vessel. Without being on board, it's going to be a deluge that's going to destroy us. Mm -hmm. So it's so critical now, and we only hope and pray. Mm -hmm. And in 2008, I was there in Africa by Allah's grace in Ghana, when the Khalifa came to launch the next century of Khalafat. And I believe the signal here was that it's in this continent as well, the audience that is really being directed toward in this, this program. This is where the new future has to come from. We should rise up and join and mass this whole movement of saving mankind, starting right in Mother Africa. Absolutely. And um, Noah's Ark said, thought he was saved by being on the mountain. Jams up. What's been the response of the global leaders to um, this message? Alhamdulillah, um, when Hazur rode 
um, let us talk world leaders or wherever he goes and address, mm -hmm. people really acknowledge mm -hmm. the message that Hazur is trying to put across. Mm -hmm. And many leaders obviously responded to Hazur. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, whenever they meet Hazur, I'll just bring an example of mm -hmm. the Minister of Agriculture from the Gambia. Mm -hmm. When he met Hazur, mm -hmm. you know, he was very happy how Hazur spoke to him. And he responded well by telling Hazur that, I'm going to take your message back home to the president. That is what, and, a, you know, wise, that is what a wise leader yeah, does and listening yes. to this. And that's what the wise leaders at the time of the Holy Prophet Muhammad so, 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 so. Wasallam, did. They respected the letters and God Almighty respected them. But for those that res dis disrespected it, God Almighty showed them that you should not disrespect my chosen servants. Dear viewers, we are sure you enjoyed this program, this th series of programs that came to you from our MTA International Studios here in Qadian, the birthplace of the Promised Ali, Salatu Wasallam. We appreciate your messages that have been coming in. I say thank you to our panelists here and from our MTA International team here in Qadian. We say a very warm Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu to you. May the peace and blessings of God Almighty be upon you all. Ismau sauta sama ja al masi u ja al masi Ismau isma sauta sama ja al masi